Hey guys, it's Denise and I'm in my studio. I should be working. I have lots of projects going on with two shows right on my heels. They're, they're coming up fast, but I got new colors yesterday from Nova Color. It's their mid-century collection and I am getting ready to do um, a show in January that I'm gonna be using all these colors. So I had to stop everything and play with them. So um <gasps> pulled out my jelly plate and started making some papers. And now I gotta get back to doing the work that's at hand. But I wanna show share this with you, so take a look. Okay, so here is my mid-century color palette. And um, I'm gonna slide these aside and do them bottoms up so you can see what my colors are. Uh, this is my pad that I use to clean off my brayer. And these are kind of the direction I'm going. I, I'm gonna be working, um, playing around and experimenting uh, with mi more mid-century designs. I have another show coming up um, in January that I've already started to get ready for. And part of getting ready for a show is experimenting and playing with things to see what you can do. So um, here are a couple of things I've gotten starts on. Let's see, these guys I'm gonna work over top of. But I created most of these in like an hour's time yesterday when I got these colors. And I'm really liking the direction that they're going. Um, like I said, I'm experimenting. I'm not sure exactly uh, where they're gonna end up, but love where this one's going. I love the, the colors in there and the pattern. And then some of them are here that I'll just be working over. But I want to share, what I'm going to share with you is my favorite, what I've done so far with these. And this was just playing around with a couple of different applications using the colors, but I love this and I love this. So I'm going to show you how I got to these. And I used a couple different things. I used my Posca pens and I actually used some uh, pastels, just chalk pastels, soft pastels. So let me get my plate out. And you can see, you know, this is what I was playing with last night. And uh, when I was working with them, so where do I want to go with this? The way that I started is I took, this is just a little hand cut stencil and I lined it up. Kind of got a little movement going on that. And let's do this one with the Posca. So let me figure out what colors now. And in the Posca, I don't have these same colors and I'm wanting to stick with the mid-century. So I'm gonna go with black because that's an easy one to make go with anything. And I just did a back and, back and forth scribble. Kinda outlined them and then went back and forth and scribbled in the same direction. And now this one's coming out a lot darker than uh, the one I did yesterday. Uh, my pen seems to want to cooperate with me today. Come on, keep coming. Okay. Now, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and dry. Yeah, I'm gonna give it about five minutes to dry and then I'll come back. Okay, while I'm waiting for this to dry up, let me talk a little bit about the paint. Um, I just received this collection of mid-century colors from Nova Color and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, the colors in the collection of mid-century are Venetian red, 
Raw Umber Dark, Cadmium Deep Red, Neutral Gray Number 5, Chromium Oxide Green, Raw Titanium Matte, this is a translucent paint, Peach Tone, which is opaque, Yellow Oxide, and um, Blue Green, which is opaque. So those are the colors that I have. So far, I've done these dots with the pink. And then I just used a core, I believe this one I used the, the soft pastels on. I have the blue green, also used the pastels. And I really liked this color. I wasn't sure I was going to, but this is the uh, raw titanium matte over over the chromium oxide green and then a black posca pen this i believe is the black posca pen with the yellow ochre over it and i really love the way these are looking and i know i can use these a lot so as long as i have my jelly plate out i figured i'd make a few of them those colors what do i want to do with this i kind of I'm thinking the red, but I think I like this better. So what I've been doing I just take a little spatula and I'm going to use something. This one black is not dry yet, so I'm going to just blot that up. Yeah, there we go. And what I've been doing is just Taking a little bit of the paint, adding it on. Set that aside. Bring her over. I might have a little bit more paint than I need, and I'm feeling a little bump there. Jelly plates are very sensitive. Okay. So I've got that rolled pretty even. And now I have a couple of papers that I've been using. And the one I'm loving, I can't find anymore. It's a pad of neutrals. I've used most all of it. I think I'm going to go with this green. And um, it's a... Let me lay this on and then I'll talk to you more about that. It's a cardstock paper. And I bought it quite a while ago. And never used it. All of a sudden I discovered it and I've fallen in love with it, but I can't find it anymore. I don't think, um, I don't, maybe the company isn't in business. It's called Craft Smith and it's a scrapbooking paper. Let me just wipe off the excess here. And I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. Now, I'm not too worried about the registration on these pieces because I'll be cutting them up. And always make sure to clean your, your brayer off. And, and I, I will use these papers for mixed media in the future and flip this over so it doesn't stick to your uh, pad. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute. Um, anyway, back to the paper. Um, it's This was all neutrals and it's a really nice cardstock that has kind of a linen uh, texture finish to it. It's really, really my favorite and now I can't find it anymore. I also, of course, have my deli paper and I have another white cardstock that I use, but I can't leave this on very long because the paper will tear. And then of course I have um, deli paper that I'm using and also a rice paper. Although the rice paper that I have is not very strong, so it tends to tear. Um, I bought a, a brand I hadn't used before and it was a 12 by 12 size that I wanted. And um, yeah. It's tearing. 
So I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes, maybe four minutes, and uh, then I'll do the okay, reveal. Let's see what we got here. Are you ready? And I love the way this paper peels off. It stays pretty, pretty strong. No tearing, comes off really easy. And oh my gosh, look how fun that is. That is just fun. And it's picked up, you probably can't see it, but it's picked up little bits and pieces of the turquoise that I had down before. So I'm pretty excited about that one. Oh my gosh, love it. Now let me, let me do a little ghost print here. Let me clean this guy off. Maybe I'll just do the same color so I have this color as a background for something. And hopefully that will just loosen up what I have going on on my my gel plate. And this is, by the way, the 12 by 12 jelly plate. Um, it's new. Uh, it's the largest size that I've played with. And I primarily um, just make papers to add into my mixed media, although I'm kind of interested in actually cutting uh, creating some more art pieces for my mixed media. Or rather, creating art, actual pieces of art from my jelly plate instead of just papers. Let's see if that cleans it up a little bit. I know I'll probably get a really good... A really great texture. I love the texture. Love it. I live for things like this. Really love that. Okay, so now let's try. Okay, I'm going to use this, this bigger um, circle stencil. And I am going to use, what am I going to use? I want to do the, the, the um, chalk. I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out. And let me see if I can get my fingers on it. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do black with this too. Now this is a, a much softer um, much softer look than the Posca pen, as you can see. Not very much of it goes on. Let's see if I lay it on its side. I wanted to try an oil pastel, but I'm not sure oil pastel will work. Now I lay it on its side, or I wonder if charcoal would work. Uh, without without messing up my jelly pad. If anybody knows, um, feel free to give me a shout. Put it in the description below and tell us if you've had experience using oil pastels or charcoal or what other marking tools have you used that have worked out really well on your jelly plate that have not ruined it completely. really I, I don't really care apparently by how I'm doing this so haphazardly um I just want the feel of circles I don't care if I have a perfect little circle the more textured the more interesting I think it'll be we'll see okay let, let's see what happens let's see what happens with this one I'm not going to worry about all the little speckles there. Okay. Here we go. 
Now, I think I said, I may have said, I think this is more of a um, uh, transparent paint. So maybe it wasn't the best thing to use. But I'm going to go over, over white paper. So um, it'll be interesting to see if any of the white shows through. Now, I don't, haven't had completely great luck with this paper because it has tended to tear when you leave it on too long. That might have to do with, you know, when I use my little smoother, I might be using it with a little bit too much pressure. So I'm going to use my hands for this one. And... Clean up the edges a little bit. Wow, that seems to be pulling up already. <clears throat> Let's see. Is it ready? But it's not pulling up. It's pulling up the paint really easy, but it's not pulling up the chalk yet. I mean, it will be enough of a pattern. I think it's still going to look pretty cool. And it's experimenting. I love experimenting. Yeah, I've got to pull this up because it, it, the paper is starting to tear a little bit. That looks pretty fun. Come on, little plate. Settle down. Now, there are quite a few white marks, and those are from bumps that, you know, little pieces of the chalk held the paper from touching down, but it's still pretty cool. I can definitely play with this. I can go over it a couple more times with, with different colors, but now what do we do with this? I want to put something on it that is more opaque. Here's the CAD red. Let's do that and see if we can, and I'll use the stronger paper, and let's see if leaving it on a little bit longer makes a difference. Let's see if we can pull this any of this back up. I don't remember that when I did it the first time if I had to stop and clean the, clean that actually off the plate. But let's do this. And I'm going to take a piece of, uh, let's, let's do something that has a little bit of a background color. I'm liking this, and I really love um, doing. I really love doing uh, the gel prints over these darker colored papers. It really makes a difference. It, um, you know, obviously because it's got a darker color underneath, it's going to come out much different than if I just did it over a white paper. Now this paper I can leave on for a few more minutes. So, um, well that's happening. I have come over here and I've, while I was waiting, I cut out some fun little shapes, very mid-century shapes. And um, once this little guy gets pulled up, I'm gonna do, uh, one of these, just because I'm having fun doing this and I may as well leave the video going. So um, I'll be back in about three minutes. Okay, let's see what this guy is doing. 
Mm, hardly pulling off anything. I think maybe that red was a little too, too dark. So that, you know, it's okay, but not really what I want. So let me see, am I gonna be able to get that off? Let me do another light color. Let's see what happens with pink. We'll give it one more shot and see if uh, the soft pastels come off. I, you know what? I think they do not. Oh, and as I've been going, I'm trying to add a little swatch to the top of my, my jars so I know which ones they are. So we got that. I have a feeling this isn't going to come up anymore. That's my my instinct on this one. Because now that I'm remembering all the way back to last night when I was playing with these, I was pretty excited to get these paints. So I do dove right in, uh, let all my other arts responsibilities slip by while I did this. Let's see if maybe... A piece of rice paper will pull that up. But anyway, so last night I feel like I had to really go back in and clean the jelly plate to get the soft pastels off, which is not a big deal. But, you know, when you're experimenting, you hate to stop and have to do stuff, do maintenance stuff. But sometimes that's part of the gig. I don't want to let that sit too long because I know this paper does tear. I love that color. It's pulling up a little bit of it. Come on. I love the pink and black. I hope this turns out. Yeah, it's pulling a little of the paper up, so. But it's also pulling that chalk up, which I really like. I'm liking it. I'm not sure why that happened, but it looks pretty cool. I, I know I can use these papers for something really great. Now gonna clean this guy I'm gonna use just a little bit of I've got a baby wipe and put just a little alcohol on it and uh, clean try to clean the, this pastel off I know it comes off and as soon as I get it off I'll come okay right back. just so you know that took about 10 minutes to clean that off, and you can see it's still not cleaned off. So while I really did like the effect, um, ah, here we are. I did like the earlier effect I got with the, this was with the pastels, and I think this one was with pastels. I like that painterly feel to it. And obviously that's the Posca pen. I'm not sure I would use it again because it's, it's, I'd have to really, 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 really be um, looking for that effect because um, I don't like to have to spend that much time cleaning my paint, my plate in between. I used baby oil on it um, and then came back with a little bit of alcohol rub and some water because the baby oil is really great to condition your plate. But if you try to put paint over it, water base paints water and oil don't mix so i end up with a bunch of little um little holes in it which actually is not so bad so now what i'm going to do as a really since i've already got these things i'm going to do a quick little um you know i just cut out some shapes that were um you know in my mind mid-century let's see we can do this
about that. that. I don't really need too many. Let's put that there. Uh, I got a little circle here. I kind of want that little circle. And maybe, maybe that. Okay, I kind of like that. I'm going to go over this red. So what do I want to go over the red with? It's very dark. Um, I'm not sure anything I go over this with is going to read very well. Let, let me try it with the, the um, yellow ochre. And the yellow ochre is opaque, so maybe I'll have a little bit of luck with that one. Let's give it a shot. And and I'm, this is all I'm going to do. Um, I just wanted to, to show you... Uh, First, I just wanted to share my excitement of having the mid-century color palette, which I am pretty excited about. And uh, But I have to get back to some of my other art responsibilities, getting ready for two shows coming up, as I've been mentioning. And um, I'll put links to those down in the, the uh, description. And I know this says it's opaque, but I don't think it's opaque enough. Or what I'm doing, or I just haven't put enough on. Let's put a little bit more on. Because I would like this to be a little bit darker. I could have done it in black. I do have black. And then when I'm done, I have all these great little shapes that I can use that are in the color palette that I want. All right, let's see what this is gonna do. Let's take these off. I love mid-century. I love I love the simple designs, the lines, the Jetsons. If you remember the Jetsons. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. I don't know how well it's gonna read over this deep, deep red. Again, this paper is pretty strong, so um, I'm not too worried about it tearing up, especially when it has some paint already on it. Okay, I could get lost in this all day long, but I'm not going to because I kind of can't. I have other things to do. But it's so much fun. Let's see if I got anything. Yeah, kind of cool. Oh, I do like the, the, oh, look at the texture. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have so much fun with this one. Texture's great. Now let me see. This is my little um, deli sheet that I was using to clean off my plate. So let me just throw that down. See if the rest of that will pull off for me. Yeah, that's all I wanted it to do is just clean off my plate. Clean off your plate. And it did that. And I got another cool piece of colored paper that I can still play with this. So, um, oh my gosh, so fun. Polka dots, love, love, love all the polka dots I created. And uh, I, I think you're going to see these and a, a lot of my artwork coming up because um, I really am loving, I'm loving how they look. 
Just those simple little dots. So uh, that's all I got for you this week. It was just a, a quick um, in the studio play time in between all my other things I'm doing for my shows. And um, thanks for being here. Hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, leave any questions or comments and let us know what you do with your jelly plate and uh, what you do when you get excited about a new paint palette showing up in your studio. And I'll see you next week. Bye.